Welcome to the Staying Free podcast. This podcast seeks to give a voice to real people around the world who are attempting to stay free, stay sovereign, and stay sane in a world which is changing faster than ever. In this episode, I talk with Natalie, also known as World of NC on Twitter. Natalie is a mum, a mental health supporter, and a true freedom fighter who has amassed a large following through her extremely popular videos advocating for freedom and calling out COVID lies and inconsistencies. I hope you enjoy this conversation, and if you have any feedback or suggestions for interesting guests, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. A link is in the show notes. On to the episode. So, Natalie, thanks so much for coming on. It's great to actually be able to speak after so long following each other. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I guess um, where I know you from is mainly from putting out videos quite early on into this. I would say it was probably just after the spring of 2020, maybe in like kind of April or May time, you were already putting out some really great videos that did, uh, that you yeah. know, had a lot of traction actually on Twitter. So um, I was hoping that you could just share a bit of your story, kind of going back to the beginning yeah. of this whole covid 1984 era which is where i know you from and just give a bit of information about yourself yeah so um i mean i i I kind of had a twitter account uh before that but as probably with most people didn't really use it that that often you know just a few thoughts here and there um and then obviously as the lockdown um started to approach well just before that when they started i knew something wasn't right even kind of january february i don't know the same as you something just was making really be very uncomfortable when they were talking about the virus and the closer it got to March um and I I'm I'm quite good with figures anyway because I'm autistic and I was listening to all the figures that come across on that very first week when they they, because it locked down it was March the 20th I think which is the Friday they announced it and I just absolutely knew that something was very sinister and very, very wrong. That, you know, I, I know other people, it took them later to realise, but that very first week, um, the figures just did not add up, you know, for e- economically, um, in terms of um, in terms of health. Um, so very from that first week, I on Twitter, I just wanted to make people realise, so I was questioning things right from the start. Um, and then the videos came into play because I realized that they were getting a lot more traction. So if I wanted to wake people up and make people aware that there was something wrong, tweets alone wouldn't make that much of a difference. And to get a wider audience and to get people listening, then the videos were the, were the way to do it. Yeah, well, I'm really glad that you did that because, you know, they definitely kind of went a long way. And, you know, I really love the energy that you're putting into those videos. You know, it kind of had just the right, yeah. I guess, a, a really nice balance between kind of positivity, but also like a serious yeah. message and the, and the yeah. kind of necessity to really kind of get a strongly worded kind of warning out there, which I, I mean, yeah. I haven't actually looked back at them recently, but I imagine if you were to look back at them now, they would be pretty prophetic, actually. Well, yeah, I shared one to, um, yesterday with the vaccine uh, passport announcement because I made one in early September, which literally said they'll they'll um, as the vaccine passport votes coming up, they'll change it so it won't just be the double jab. You'll have to have the booster added to it, and literally, in terms you said, in terms of completely prophetic, I, the 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 my video literally predicts it as it's come into play. Um, and so many people are like, wow, that's that's spot on. But it's not even that hard to do, as you know, because you've made the same predictions as me once you're following it and once you're awake to the situation. It, 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 it's not actually that hard to predict what's coming because it's all out there for people to see. Yeah, I mean, the, the blueprint is there. I mean, people um, sometimes wonder, like my my close friends and family, and they're like, oh, wow, you really, you really nailed this. You really got it. And it's like, you know, how how did you, how did you do that? How did you know? And it's like, well, like they're telling us what they're going to do. I mean, they're telling us, um, you don't really need to look very far. You just look at pretty much everything that WEF and these other kind of shady organizations are saying, and there's your answer. It's not like you have to really do much digging. Yeah. And and as well, you know, once, once you understand that they put everything in the media first as well, so they they t- they test run things, you know. They own they own the media, so they put things in there months before they put an idea in to to see how that will go. So that will go. So most of the time, that they're, they're they're putting ideas out there first to test them as well with the public. 
So if you is if you follow the news, if you if you follow what's going on, it's even easier to predict what's going on. But we, we have to remember that so many people are the opposite of us. We want to find out what's going on. We've got a first for knowledge, but unfortunately, so many people with the prob- with what's happened over the last two years with mental health, they do the opposite, don't they? Like a cognitive dissonance. It's like let's pretend, let's pretend nothing's going on. Let's shut ourselves off to the news. And what they do listen to, unfortunately, is just the mainstream media propaganda, rather than where we are, where we're analysing a whole situation. Yeah. And uh, you're right. It, it, the media pretty much tells you what they're going to do. And it's this constant kind of pushing and nudging. You know, you you see these articles and it's like, uh, you know, normally it ends with a question mark. Everything they want to do is an yes, article yeah. that ends in a question mark. It's like, should we ban the unvaccinated from clubs? Question mark. As if like, I'm not suggesting it. I'm not telling <laughs> you that's what we're going to do or that we should do, but just put it out there. And then they see yeah. what they, you know, they see. And then it's like the first time they say it, everyone's like, God, you are cra- you, you, you're crazy. Yeah. You're fascist, etc." And then they put it out a second time and a third time, yeah. a fourth time. And by the time you've heard it 10 times, you're like, oh, maybe it's not such a crazy idea. And here we are. Um, yeah. And that's how the nudge units work. It's how the behavioural psychologists work and say it's what it's the job that, that that they're doing. It's the subliminal messages, you know. And if you're following those things, you can see it months and months before, like 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 we have, you know. And and I'm finding even now, after all this time, what's so crazy is people that claim to be awake. Um, still are saying to me, oh, that won't happen. You know, they've obviously in the last couple of months been talking more and more about mandatory vaccinations across the board, not just for NHS workers, but for everyone. Obviously, we've seen that in Austria and Germany. So even uh, people who claim to know where this is going, no, 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 that won't happen here. No, that won't happen. Yeah, the nudge units, like you said, all the, you, you know, the, the you gov, you gov is it, or, you know, the polls, and they've even started it already on the, on, on the, breakfast programs the polls and that they're already saying would you accept mandatory vaccinations in this country it's all there it's all ready for for what they're intending to happen in the future if people comply obviously because as we know tyranny is only possible with compliance so these this and that's how they do it to start with they're pushing ideas through through subliminal messages through the media and that's that's why as you said why people over time start to think oh maybe that idea is not so bad yeah. Maybe it isn't so fascist after all. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> at the moment, my my biggest kind of barometer or my, my kind of test for what's coming down the line is what is... Uh, What's Jeremy Vine saying? Like everything Jeremy Vine saying, it's yes. basically just like, there's your blueprint. Has Jeremy Vine kind of uttered it in an in a inquisitive manner and then had some kind of, you know, other notable fascist just surrounding him there talking about it as if it's a logical or reasonable yeah. idea? Yeah, you've got like these figures. So you, you've got him, you've got Piers Morgan, you've now got Andrew Neil. You've got, it's like they take these and they, they tend to be middle-aged men as well because they're like, obviously that kind of like, oh, you be, it's more believable if it's some business, if it's some some businessman type, you know. And yeah, that it's just they're pushing the fascist message across. And apparently if it comes from them, it's more believable. But like you said, you know, that they use these certain people to push that message. And Jeremy Bavine, like you said, across the whole thing, he's always been one of the first people in the media to push those ideas and to, to, to do the questions. I'm kind of happy about it, actually. I don't mind the fact that they're all just completely just painting a target on their back, because when this whole scam comes crumbling down and it will it absolutely will because it's impossible to kind of hide the truth from ever being realized um all of these people have just been on tv basically just saying um all of this totally vile stuff which is going to come back and haunt them one day i truly believe that but but what i never understand with these people though is that there must be a reason for them doing it. i mean obviously it could just be they are genuinely vile fascist you know human beings but mainly i think it's most of them are either being blackmailed or bribed or paid. In the, I mean, we see obviously with um, Andrew Neil, there was lots of uh, mention that he could have been um, involved with with, with with other with other criminal activities. So therefore, it would be more likely that he might be um, uh, having to, to 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 talk that way to get himself out of something. But you know, other people, how much are they being paid? Jeremy Vine, for example, for me, it. it, it he would easily take a lot of money to be to be 
to for them to be saying to him, oh, can you push this agenda? And he'd be like, oh, absolutely no problem, because all I care, I'm, I'm a complete narcissist. And as long as I get enough viewing figures and everybody seems to be liking it, I'll be quite happy to go along with it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, some of them, I imagine, just genuinely have no philosophy or no kind of, you know, personal like ideas about life, any kind yes. of principles. So I do think that that seems to be the case, especially amongst yes, I- mainstream media personalities. Maybe it selects for it. Maybe, you know, there are people in there who have been put in by the powers that be, you know. Um, yes. I'm sure that I'm sure that we have people working in our news networks who um, are actually, you know, working for the government in some way, you know, yeah. like disinformation um, people. Um, but yeah, like what you said about Andrew Neil, and, you know, um, we both know what, what, what you're referring to when you, when you mentioned that, um, yeah. you know, and nobody's making any, any kind of firm accusations here. But all I would say yeah. is, is I cannot name one person who's been on like Epstein's Island or whatever, like yeah. has one person in that logbook come out against, uh, you know, Nazi passports or whatever. Like, I'm not sure not that one. any have, I'm not sure any have. So like, no. all I'm saying is that I'm not saying that every single person who supports vaccine passports has been to Epstein's Island, but everyone who's been on Epstein's Island pretty much supports them, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and, and as we as we know, who is it? we will say who was the very first person in the celebrity world to have got COVID. Do you remember, like when Tom Hanks come out and who's supposedly, obviously, supposed to be with Epstein's Island again? He he was the first person to supposedly come out and have COVID, and those things as well. You know. They can't, as we say in life, there aren't that many coincidences and, and, and it all seems to, to, to go around the same things, you know. Look, there isn't anyone that is involved in that that's ever come out and made a moral stance. Well, they can't. They're obviously being blackmailed. by Or, or but it's not even blackmailed, it's protection, protecting them, themselves. Yeah, I definitely think, and I know this is getting probably into more of an area of conspiratorial talking than I would necessarily go because you yeah. can't prove any of this stuff, right? No, like at the end of the day, you can't, you can't right. and I don't claim to be able to. And if someone's, you know, going to kind of be like, oh, you know, like show that these these claims check out, I, I can't necessarily. But it just sometimes you got a hunch about something. And the way that I see it, there seems to be a commonality here between yes. all of the kind of crazy secrecy that's going on with the with the Epstein stuff and the paedophile rings yeah. and stuff. And the um, the fact that all of these people, they're all on one side when it comes to big world events, big political world events. So it it would stand to reason that um, that is being used. I, I think that's what the whole Epstein thing is about, is about blackmail. Not necessarily saying it's all about, you know, that COVID necessarily is even a big part yeah. of that. It might not be, right? But it clearly, that whole thing is about getting dirt on someone so they do what you tell them and it absolutely would not surprise me if this comes out in the wash that actually you know some of these people who are supporting some of this stuff have involvement in that whether they did something or whether they you know someone could could make out what they did or they could ruin their reputation i reckon that that will be a part of this without a doubt and even the fact that the trial was on at the same time that they suddenly put so many restrictions on at the same time in europe you know cop 26 um, ends and then the, basically the trial starts and then suddenly that's when you're getting vaccine passports here Austria and Germany it all it was all very convenient You'd, at the same time and like we said there are no coincidences as well um, and, it, and it's a very good way for them to to make sure that the trial doesn't um, hit hit the mainstream news and they can just do a little page here and there so people don't see it because of course the COVID news and Omicron and the passports and everything else where will take centre stage. Yeah, I didn't think about that, actually. The fact that, you know, this is all suddenly flared up right when the um, the Ghislaine Maxwell stuff is happening. Um, yeah, that, I'd not thought about it that way. But, you know, I, I sometimes wonder whether all of this kind of COVID um, push, this kind of globalist push, seems very strangely correlated in timing where you have um, essentially the kind of uncovering of some pretty crazy stuff uh, in the corridors of power, you know, like this, this, do you know what really started this, this whole thing? If there was a kind of uh, the gunshot heard around the world, it was yeah. actually Epstein, you know, and I'm doing uh, air quotes here, killing himself, right? Yeah. That seems that, to yeah. almost be like the beginning yeah. of, of, yeah. of this era, right? Like, and I'm not, I'm not making any claims about exactly how that links in, but it seems to be that all of a sudden there's this massive rush after that. 
but you're kind of right because even because when when actually was that what what date was that at, at the Epstein? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I remember exactly saying to people as soon as I heard it because obviously this is the way my mind works. No way did he kill himself. I said that's that doesn't. Say. And then I was I was going, but there's no when you look in the past in that particular prison, there's no in solitary confinement. Nobody else has done that before. And I remember people saying to me again. Oh, Natalie, it's just it's almost like they say, stop thinking about it. Like, like don't don't overplay things in your head. But you're yeah. right. The same people that were questioning the Epstein thing seems to seem to be the same people that have then gone on to question COVID. And there must be some, like you said, it all started from there. So there's obviously some link in in the the in the political elite type world that that probably links it in some way. Because obviously, as we know. That the more work we've done on it and the more research, this isn't just a, this isn't just something that's happened in the last two years. This this has been planned and put in place for a long, long, long time. You know, this isn't just suddenly coincident yeah. that 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 um, a vaccine supposedly came into place in 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 nine months after they supposedly spotted a virus come into place in in January of um, or December of. 2019 2020 so yeah there's been a lot of firsts that have happened in the past uh, couple of years so so i'm just looking it up now and uh and epstein i did this is like a joe rogan podcast jamie when did uh, <laughs> when did uh, when did epstein epstein yeah. kill himself so uh he he killed himself um i stress that deliberately in um august of 2019 so this was what September, yeah. October, yeah. like four months before before coronavirus yeah. was was discovered. Yeah, this, I this. mean, maybe maybe no relationship. Just saying. Do you know what's got me on on all of this stuff? Actually, it's uh, when after I was talking to Adam Brimson because he he, he yeah. told me to check out a couple of podcasts. Um, one of them was called oh, what was it? Oh, I'm blanking on the names. I'll I'll put them in the show notes uh, when I remember. Yeah. I always do this. But um, after listening to those, like they definitely tie a lot of a lot of things together. And I wasn't really on that whole kind of okay, maybe these things are connected until listening to some of these guys talk about world events and some of the the kind of relationships in these um, really central places of power. And and now I'm like, okay, like th- there's something going on here. Well, I think I think the link that we've kind of seen is that obviously if that happened in August that it's a way to tell other people you know if you're going to make a threat look this has happened look you're involved this is what you have to follow i mean obviously that's complete consp- that's complete conspiracy but if you want someone if in any walk of life in any history we've ever seen if you want somebody to do what 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 you want it's easier to make a threat if you could already see oh look what's happened to somebody else if yeah. you don't follow, yeah. follow our orders, um, and as as we've seen, anyone that's had any link to it happens to absolutely follow the COVID uh, religion and the passports exactly. And then then you've got to say, well, you know, there has to be some coincidence on some level. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, um, you know, we know that all of these names in the logbook, and when I see one of them actually kind of come out and and be actively against this stuff. Fine, and maybe, maybe there are. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying there yeah. definitely isn't, but it just seems to me like I, I haven't seen them out there. I haven't seen them out there. Yeah, and 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 obviously, like we said, time will tell. But normally, when you normally when people like us we come up with um, these uh, conspiracies, they don't normally um, get proved wrong very easily. And there's that. You know, over time we've seen that. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I put things out on Twitter, which you know, over the last two years, which people have gone, no, that's way too far out. And then as time's gone on, people have gone, oh, yeah, maybe not so much. I'm kind of testing the world at this point. I'm just like, yes. let's just, because all of my conspiracies keep coming true, I'm like, let's just let's just go <laughs> yeah. a level deeper. I, I think I think next week I'm going to start saying that the Queen's a lizard because at this point, yeah. maybe, maybe the rule is just that all conspiracies are true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's something I'm struggling, struggling a little bit at the moment, um, you know, on, on Twitter generally, because as you said, when I started, you know, I really had such a positive belief that, that it could make such a difference in terms of non-compliance and people and people waking up. Um, I know both of us were were going to the protests. You know, I was it was basically almost became my life to 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 
try and make a change. Um, but so recently, I, it, I'm finding it harder with people um, that, like, I'll log on and every other comment seems to be, we're winning. That won't happen. Our numbers are growing. Like, it's almost like it's got to a point where, like I said, it's it's a different form of cognitive dissonance, but in a way it's no different to the people who are actually just shutting their he- he- heads off and going to get the going to get their booster and trying to pretend that everything's okay. Because sometimes when I'm pointing things out, people are people are like 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 saying um, about mandatory vaccinations. I say I work in fact and reason, and theoretically, it's possible if people keep complying that mandatory vaccinations will come into play. And I'll get, I'm starting to get abuse from it from the awake community. I'm starting mm-hmm. to get people me and saying you're not being positive enough. You're that can't happen, and that won't happen. And our numbers are growing, and I'm a bit like. Wow, like it, it's it's a weird community there at the moment. Like you're 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 deemed like you're being a problem now. If you, you, they, they want to call you a truther, but if you want to tell the truth, you're deemed like you're being a problem. I don't know if I'm making any sense. It's- yeah, I mean, I, I think to be honest, people are quite hyper sensitive to the kind yeah. of doomsday, or not not doomsday, but you know, people who yeah. have a negative outlook because. Sometimes people get suspicious. I think that in our community, because we're so um, sensitive to kind of, um, you know, the agenda that we might be like, yeah. oh, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. Is this person kind of kind of turning? You know, a good example for me was Peter Hitchens when he kind of, yeah. you know, he was really he was really steering the narrative, you know, the, the kind of alternate narrative yeah. on this thing. And he was a really, really big player. And then all of a sudden it was just it was just like, yeah, I've rolled my sleeve up and got the jab. You know, I guess that's just life now. And it's like and it's like, hang on, Peter, like, are you was this was this legitimate? You know, like, I think that a lot of yeah, people started really to wonder. Wrong. Yeah, he was really. Yeah, that was it really, seemed very really odd. And all of a sudden, that. he just never talked about it. It was like it was just like I'm not going to talk about this. And then he went into this weird little morbid phase of showing pictures of when he used to live in Russia. Like, oh, those were the days. And it's like, God, get a grip, man. And you know, anyway, to to bring it back to to yeah. um to what you were talking about, I do think that when people, because I saw this recently with a guy um in Australia, I think. I don't know what his, uh, his Twitter handle is, but you might um, recall it. And he basically said, like, you know, I'm going to have to go and get the jab. I don't want it. I fought yeah, this his, long. I'm going to leave Ger- my job. It was called Jeromino. Jeromino. That's, that, I think that's the guy. I think that's the guy. Yeah. And a lot of people said this guy is a disinformation agent. He's out there basically to try to bring down the morale yes. of the resistance. And there's no doubt in my mind that there are people out there like that. I don't think that he is one of them. I think if that's, um, you know, and obviously I don't think you're, you're one of them. Otherwise yeah. I wouldn't be here talking to you. But I do think that people... People are hypersensitive to that. So I can kind of understand the place that that's coming from. But as you say, we do need to be realistic. But it's weird from my point of view, because I'm definitely, I'm the opposite, because you've known me right from the start. I'm not one of those doom days people at all. I'm not predicting awful things that are going to happen. But what I am, because I've got um, high function in autism, um, I I don't, I, I work very differently. My mind works differently to other people's. So I can't do false hope. So, you know, like some people are like, if you believe in manifestation and everything can come, that as an autistic person is not something I can do. So sometimes that's what the awake community is starting to feel like. They're not working on any more on facts and reason, which is how the awake community started to me. You know, we started by going, hold on, these facts and figures don't make any sense. And let's look at let's look at real um data and evidence and we're seeming to go away further and further away from that a little bit it seems to be more like it's all positive attitude and everything's going to be okay and i've got no evidence to prove that but i have to sit there and say that and if you don't natalie then you're wrong and i'm like well i'm not saying i think we can win but i'm going to back it with facts and evidence and if i come then and back it they're like no no you you know you're wrong. The narrative. Okay. So, so Natalie, so Natalie, give us the black pill. I want to give you the floor to give us the black pill now. <laughs> well, well, basically, that that I think what what sometimes I'm seeing with people, and we've seen it today. And I know you just because I just retweeted your your um, tweet on it. But a perfect example is this belief that MPs are going to save us. That that. They're not so people rather than concentrate on on this ending because of the people, we can end this. You know, if by non-compliance, tyranny, you know, you can't comply your way out of tyranny. So if we could focus 
you know, we can win this if we can all come together and try and make people understand that if we say no, they can't keep putting restrictions in. But rather than people focus on that, they're focusing on the MPs are going to come and save us. And, and, and I'm like, but we've seen for the last two years that there is too much corruption at that level, you know, and I, I got quite, you know, I got quite a lot of bad feedback because this week I said, please understand that the vote is a done deal, that the MPs that will be voting against this will, will have been instructed to do so to give an illusion of democracy. If it actually had been a close vote, we've seen before how the lobbying works. We've seen people who are like trusting Steve Baker. I've had a lot of abuse this week because I've gone, well, hold on a minute. This man is more inconsistent than any other MP. He's one of those that's promised and promised. And then he's gone to vote on things. And he's actually voted for tyrannical measures in the past. He voted for the coronavirus act. He actually got a promotion the next day as well to do so. And he went back on. And, and this is... So when I point this out, I've got abuse for it and said, well, you're not being positive enough. And I'm like... Yeah, okay. That's that's not that, that's not that much of a black pill then because I totally no. agree with you. I think that the sooner that we can all just laugh at what the politicians are doing and make our own way in this world and just move the movement according to our own will, the better. No, but that's, but that's what I mean. It's not a black pill, but what I'm surprised by is becoming more of it on that. It's like I said, there's a... The more that I put this out there, it's like people, like they keep coming out saying, we need to do more common law. We need to do this. And I'm like, well, no, we just need to not comply at this stage. You know, yeah. after it, it's like they're putting their faith. They need the idea that somebody's going to come save us. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And actually, one of the tweets I saw, just to put this in context for the listeners, because I'm not sure exactly how long after we record this, this will go out. This is the night we've just had the vote, right? So we've just had the yeah. vote in the in the UK House of Parliament. They've said they are voting for vaccine passports, right? So I saw a tweet uh, directly after this, and someone said, "This is a really great reason to be positive because um, <laughs> you know there's um, there's so many. T- the, basically, I think most of the Conservatives voted against, so it had to go through on the Labour vote. And they said, "Oh well, now there'll be a leadership challenge, and then obviously oh, no, if there's a leadership no. challenge, it's going to have to be one of the people who voted against who's going to become the new leader because Boris is toast, etc." And I'm just like. How many, how much hopium do you have to have to believe yeah. in that? And and this is I'm because, because you know I'm seeing this more and more, and it's almost like the closer we get to things being worse, if you know, like the exports, you know, so because vote today was on masks and mandatory vaccination for NHS workers, and the vaccine pass was all obviously passed very easily, and so the the closer we get to things being more tyrannical the more cognitive dissonance and the more hope and a saviour they want to find. You know, it's almost like that. it's like their brains are doing the opposite. That they, they can't quite grasp where we're going. So it's a bit more like the sheep, that, if you like, that they used to, that, to like take the mick out of. They're doing the same. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, put the fingers in the air. It's fine, it's fine. The MPs are going to save us. And I'm like, it's actually really the opposite. If anything, like you said about the black pill, it's as simple as that. The longer this goes on, there is only, we are the only way out of this. It's as simple as that. If people comply, which unfortunately, well, I believe, and this is, I believe there will be casualties. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. If people carry on complying, and we've seen it with Australia, when they had no jab, no job, like Jerome, I can't even say the word, but Geronimo, which we said, now he backed out and went and got his um, AstraZeneca um, jab because he said, I needed to feed my family. And as much as we've seen so many people carry on saying, we won't back down. We won't get the jab. We have seen across the world, the more the coercive measures come into effect, lo- loads more people get the vaccine. And that is what I say to people. And that's what people don't like me saying, that that unfortunately the, the number of dissenters will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Not many people, because sometimes they're saying, if you're not going to get the vaccine now, you'll never get the vaccine. And I come and say, that's absolute rubbish. The more coercive measures that come in, the, the number will get much and much smaller. Um, and that's, that's to me is the, uh, that to me is the truth. And if you don't accept that and you don't, and, it, and, and you don't understand that now, then to me, that's where the problem is. You know, if you don't, 
We're not doing the right things. If you can't understand that they are the pressure they're going to put on us, it will start with no jab, no job. They will remove the benefits from people, you know, and this will become with compliance. They can't do this overnight, but they can, they, each time they can, people comply with a measure, the next time they can make it worse. Then they will take healthcare away from the unvaccinated. They will remove all benefits. They will not let landlords have unvaccinated people in. And eventually the dissenters will get less and less and less. So, you know, people don't want to hear that anymore on Twitter. If I sometimes put this on, you know, I get people blocking me saying, you're not being positive enough. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not, I, I still think we can win. Absolutely. But not if you're not going to tell the truth. Not if we're now not allowed to say anything. that Because it's like, it's almost like, oh, we're not allowed to hurt anybody's feelings anymore because it might say something not, you know, it's. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that the, I don't think that that's the um, the mentality, though, behind people who don't like the negative thing. I, I agree with you, by the way. Like, I, I think that we need to be realistic in everything you say there. I totally agree with And we've got to be ready for it and yeah. on board with it and look at the real solutions that are going to work and not look at these, yeah. you know, like clowns in, in Parliament, etc. But I but I think that the mentality or the kind of reasoning behind the people who say, no, um, we don't want to hear this kind of like negative um, message, it's, it's more because... Um, <laughs> I guess it's more just because like people want to like have something to cling on to. And if some people start saying, hey, you know, like I'm saying I won't get the jab now, but, you know, if it's between that and the job, like I might get it. Like it's almost like there is and I can understand the reason for not allowing that kind of mentality to take hold. I think that everyone needs to have a point of being like it doesn't matter no matter what comes down the line, because it's not like. And I, I, you know, again, like I forgive, um, like Geronimo for, yeah. um, for that happening because, you know, he, he needs to, the guy needs to feed his family, et cetera, but everyone has to do what they can within their power and take yeah. reasonable, um, you know, measures in their own life. Because at the, at the end of the day, these people who are in power, and like you said, it's just, it's a complete, um, shammer for democracy. It's not really, really even a democracy. They have, they are holding all of the chips and they have a lot more chips yeah. to play, right? This is just, oh, I can't go to, to, to a club. But like you said, what happens when they take away social security? What happens when they, when you can't rent a house or buy a house? What happens when your bank account gets completely frozen and you can't do anything? Yeah. And that's how they're going to win. And that's why People sometimes misunderstand what I'm saying. What I'm saying, sometimes people are faking things now. They're like, oh, I'll just fake an LFT test or I'll I'll wear a mask sometimes because it's easy. And what I'm saying is now's the time to stand. Now, not, not down the line when they start removing us. So then you might not have a choice. Then if you can't feed your family, you might feel you have to take the vaccine. That's what I'm... It's it's almost like that. Sometimes I'm feeling debate is being stopped, and people understanding actually the situation because it's like they're putting their fingers in their ears, saying, "I don't want to hear anything negative anymore." Because because then it's like it's to me it's not helpful because that's how we actually got somewhere in the first place. Like the videos in the first place that I was making, I used to have people like some of the first vaccine passport ones or or like the Freedom Day announcement and stuff like that. I was one of the ones that says, you know, this is absolutely incorrect. This is what will happen. And it used to be the so-called like bedwetters that people call them or sheep that would come on and say, don't be silly, that won't happen. But I'm now getting our community saying, don't be silly, that won't happen. And I'm like, it, it, it's there's a turnaround that's making me feel really uncomfortable because there's a difference between saying I agree with you theoretically that could happen but I don't believe that it would happen I believe there's nothing that's really different but they're not saying that it's like they're sticking their hands in their in their ears going la 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 let's pretend that this isn't really happening when and if that happens to too many people then actually our chance of, of being victorious is actually much less because what they're doing is they're sitting at home, not actually doing anything, not going to protest, not trying to talk to people, not trying to wake anybody up. They're, they're, they're literally going, I'm going to pretend that everything's going to be okay and we're going to win this because our numbers are growing, but we're not actually going to do anything about it. Okay, so let's let us let us let's bridge that gap then, because you know, you you did say that you um, have the belief that we're going to win, but that also you don't like the kind of constant hopium that's going on in the community. So well, what I, do you? I, I, and you yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I believe we're going to win, but not necessarily in my lifetime, and that's 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 the problem. I don't believe. See, I think people we're going to people we're going to be like they've got this belief that 
it will happen before arrests are made or between what I'm saying is there might have to be people that are going to get arrested. You know, there we don't. I'm not. I'm not saying as much as that camps will happen, but it is theoretically possible that if people keep complying and and each time they make it harder, eventually the number of dissenters will be small enough that arrest in camps will be theoretically possible. By the way, I'm not saying that that will happen. I'm saying if we don't stop that now. Then, then obviously that that that's a possibility. Um, so we've got to at this point try and ensure we can get as much non-compliance as possible and people to understand what's going on. But unfortunately, I feel like people have got to a point where they don't want to talk about it anymore. You know, I try and go out and talk to people. Nobody wants. It's almost like I'm getting people saying to me, "Oh, I know it's bad, Natalie, but but let's just pretend everything will be okay." Yeah, I I get the same thing. I mean, I've had it for sure, like in my social circles where, you know, the the words have actually been said, like, no talking about COVID, like, we're not allowed to talk about it, etc. And um, my my kind of response up until this point has always been, okay, like, you know, fair enough. Well, not up until this point, but I guess in the very early days, we're talking kind of like summer last year, etc. And I was like, okay, cool, we can, we, we don't have to necessarily talk about it. Like, we'll talk about other stuff, let's not fall out over it. Now, I'm very much just like, if we don't talk about this, we're going to miss That's the window of opportunity. We actually can do something. So now, I mean, I'm putting this podcast all over my social media. I don't care who he- hears it. In fact, I hope that yeah. my friends hear it because it might yeah. be the only exposure they actually get to the truth. Yeah. And I think that's what, that's the key. That's, uh, that's how we got to move things on. So it's all very well before people saying, let's be positive, but we got to move on from that now because you can't just sit at home on your keyboard and just say, but you know manifest positive messages if you're not then going out and doing anything else about it because then compliance will carry on and there will be no way of winning in the end it will get too far we everyone has to take personal responsibility and be at this point as far as i'm concerned be willing to fall out with people you know be willing to stand up and say you know that's you know, maybe not before you know it wasn't as important for but we're reaching a point now where what i'm saying is theoretically possible you know we have to start saying to people, you know, when you're in social social gatherings, like you said, no, we actually have to talk about this. Do you actually really understand what can happen in the next couple of years if you do not stand up? Whereas, like you said, often people are going out and they go, oh, let's not talk about COVID. And everyone goes, oh, let's not. Let's just pretend everything's OK. I think it's got past that stage. And I think you agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's kind of at the point now where it's just like, I, I, my community is, my, my community going forward is being built around people who are awake. And what I'm trying to do, especially with this podcast, one of the things that I want to do is through these conversations, people can share it. You know, the people I'm interviewing can share it. Yeah. I call it interviewing. It's more of a conversation, but the people I'm having yeah. a conversation with can share it with their friends and family. And it's, and it's a way, it's a, it's a way to kind of get that message in there without going up to them and shaking them and, or, you know, throwing like cold yeah. water over the face. It's like, you know, listen to me on this podcast, you know, like here, here's, here's some of the things I've been yeah. talking about and some of my ideas you know tell me what you think about this or whatever it's a way of doing that likewise for me and my own kind of like network but also um you know going forward we've got to have these conversations we can't like still be stuck in this mode where it's like okay we're just not going to talk about it. it's like you're going to not talk about it all the way to the goddamn camps yeah and that's it that's it and that's it that's it you've hit the nail on the head that's what i'm saying all these people who are going you've just got to be positive like but they're not doing anything with it it's all very well send, saying to me, oh, don't be negative. OK, then 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 what are you doing about it? And ultimately, when you think all of they're doing is sitting there and manifesting that everything will be OK and they're not actually trying to help. And if they don't, how are we ever going to achieve that? There has to be something at this point. You know, we've seen I knew it would do. The mask mandate came in and compliance has been massive. You know, so. If you then look at that and you see the vaccine passports have come out, they've voted for the NHS um, that, that, uh, mandatory vaccinations. We're at, we're, we're at a crucial point now. You know, if if people just just at this point roll over and go, oh, well, and there's a lot of that. I'm seeing a lot of it with friends who haven't been on side with me. They're literally saying to me almost they don't want to say the words you were right. But what they then do say is, what can we do now? Yeah. It's happened now. Yeah, I don't, I'm not expecting to ever get the words, you are right, but I've certainly, no. you know, they, they'll, they'll move towards it. Maybe something along the lines of, oh yeah, 
you you predicted it. You predicted things like reasonably well. It's not like you just just like say it. I I, I smashed it. Like I am yeah. privy to yeah. some information here that you know you were saying that I'm like a crazy kook conspiracy theorist. But it just so happens that maybe the things that I'm reading, maybe the things that I'm engaging with, and the you know actually has some merit to it because here we are. And I didn't just get this out of fluke. I didn't just you know like just randomly throw darts at a dartboard here. There is an agenda. There is a they who is doing this stuff, um, and is very clear to anybody who follows it and that's how you're able to make predictions it's not fluke you know even that sometimes i'm finding you know you don't have to argue with people you know um sometimes i'm seeing that i'm making a difference when i'm invited out and i'm saying to people no i'm not coming because i'm not going to be going to a business that is advocating wearing masks and I'm not going to one that's going to be asking for COVID passes. And that can start some, because I'm not then telling anybody else what they should be thinking. So yeah. I'm not preaching my views. But then they go, then they're quite taken aback and they're like, really? And I'm like, they'll, they'll, be, they'll try and then say, oh, but you can fake it. And I'm like, no. I said, I'm from a moral standpoint, I will never be complicit in this. I will be able to have a clear conscience. You know, and I sometimes just by my explaining myself, you know, that can make a difference. But, and that's what I'm trying to explain to people on Twitter. You can't just sit there saying that we're going to win, that to have a positive outlook and these things won't happen if you're then not going and doing anything yourself about it. You know, you've got, you've got to, we've all at this point, we've got to all morally say there's a duty to try on some level to make a difference to the level of compliance. Because that is the only thing, as you've seen, that was a done deal, that vote. You know, that, that I I didn't even, I'm not even upset about it because I've learned over the last two years. You see, there were some people distraught tonight about the vote. And I was surprised because I'm like, they still haven't understood that that system is, is, is a corrupt system. There's no hope in that system. You know, it... So there has to be another way, you know, and we've got to talk about those other ways and not and not put all our hopes as it is. It's a bit like, you know, like um, Q um, with Trump, all of the people in America that were like, Trump's our saviour and he's going to... Yeah, that was another one that really frustrated me. But if I'm, I'm, it feels, a, there's a little, back to, it feels a little bit like that now, like someone's coming to save us. I'm like, nobody's this one. There's no politician or common law practice or or lawsuit that's going to change this. There's no or whistleblower. That's what I'm. It's like that. The, the, there's that belief because it's like for mental health or hope that they want to believe that. But I, I don't believe that. I do believe that we can win. I do believe we can stop that. But only if everyone that understands is going out there on a daily basis and making the effort to try and wake people up and not by having arguments or anything. But but like I said, even by me doing that, it makes a huge difference. People are understanding how how seriously I take it. You know, I'm a real party girl. I, I'm a, I go out all the time. I'm a social person. And suddenly people are going, Natalie doesn't want to come out. Like, you know, because by me making that stand, it shows how serious I am. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people going, well, I'm not really going to make a stand because um, I've got to think about my mental health and I need to be able to go out myself. So I will fake an LFT test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so if people do, if 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 most people do that, how are we going to get non-compliance down? Yeah, I mean... I do think, though, that um, there is a possibility for increased non-compliance. Mainly, my my reason for this, because you were saying before about how um, you know there's going to be more and more people who are kind of coerced to taking the vaccine. But one yeah. of the things that I see operating in our favour is the push for boosters, because I also yeah, think there's going to be a trickling number of people who are like, "I'm not going to get this latest boost." This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. So the, it's kind of operating a little bit in, in both ways. So I do think that there will be people who say, I'm not getting the booster, and that means now I can't go out to this place. And that means now that when my friends invite me to a place, they're going to have to either invite me to a place which is going to allow me in without a vaccine, i.e. they're breaking the rules, or I'm not going to go out, in which case, you know, that um, friendship might suffer or whatever, but maybe that yes. will have some some ripple effect out into the world. Well, I think this it was stupid. I mean, the whole system of bringing the booster out um, 
so soon. I mean, ideally, if they'd have brought a vaccine passport out on the double jab and then added the booster, I think that would have been high, much more highly effective for, for people to believe it. The way they've done it has, you know, pushing these boosters right at Christmas um, when obviously so many people were conned effectively into getting the double jab. And I have heard a lot of people say, well, I don't really want that. So I do think some of what they've done doesn't really make much sense. However, it still depends on the coercive measures they put into place after that. So oh, I agree with you. I mean, the narrative just, so none of it makes sense. It never made sense, but even more so. So they're saying the facts. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. It's just a way, as they've done throughout this whole thing, is like you try to appeal to two camps, right? You try to yeah. appeal to everyone. Like we need to uh, appeal to the kind of total bedwetters who are just terrified of COVID and have been since day one. They've really kind of bought the propaganda hook, line and sinker. But we also need to appeal to the people who have just got their jab for, you know, the holiday or yeah. whatever. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. And the way to appeal to both camps is to just literally give both messages at the same time. And then everyone just laps it up because people hear what they want to hear. Yeah. You know, like, like what we were saying about what's happening in our community to a degree. It's just like, oh, we'll pick out the message that just seems like the, the one that appeals most to my sensibilities that's that makes it. me feel OK. Yes. And I think that's basically you, that's it. Nailed it. Across the board, whatever, whatever kind of belief you have or like you said, whether you're. Uh, on the spectrum of being so killed bed wet or awake people literally hear what they want to hear they pick out and my brain doesn't work like that as someone who's autistic I, I literally pick out on whole thing and all facts and I and that's what people are doing they're picking out what they want to hear and that's obviously how cognitive dissonance works anyway you you have a belief system and then you hear only what you want to hear that suits your own belief system um whereas I hear everything in general and I and like we said, that the the, the um, inconsistency and the and the complete hypocrisy of every message they put across, I hear it immediately. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. That's how my brain works. Instantly, I hear that, and my hear. But other people don't hear those messages, do they? They like, like we said, the like the average person who's watching the mainstream media don't hear what we hear when they hear those messages. They'll be like, "Oh, yeah, we need to go get the booster." Well, it seems like it just seems like people are under this kind of hypnosis, and you know, it really yeah. is. It is very much like I, I describe it as a cult, and I don't use that to kind of try to be, um, you know, unfair or insulting towards the people who are, who have been kind of sucked into it. Because cults, you know, like if you ever kind of watch documentaries or read about cults, like you can get incredibly intelligent people who just oh. get sucked into a cult. Like th this happens all the time. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's, and that's sometimes what we're fighting against because it's almost like a religion for some people, cult like religion status where, in order for them to kind of denounce what they believe, it would be effectively like like denouncing Jesus and God for some people. You know, they they've they've not questioned it. So nowadays they've got to a stage now that whatever they hear about it is truth. Where where we hear a message and we question its logic and is that rational and does that make sense? They don't do that. They hear something and it and it's and it's truth to them. It's you know anything that the you know the COVID message that comes in from the government. But they're doing it to save, you know, to save us. And they've got our best interests at heart. They believe they, they believe it so far, like in their heart of hearts, they don't even think to question it. I can't I can't comprehend that. You know, I can't, you know, the scary thing for me, I was going to ask out of interest for you. Um, this section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship free platforms. Uh, the, the media just 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 doesn't uh, decide to disclose these things you know it's just it's kind of just an, a, a, something that's omitted from the media narrative essentially but it's not even the media what i find absolutely fascinating i saw um a tweet today from a lady that just put she'd put like an lft test on she's just like i've just got my booster jab and look i can't believe i don't know if you saw the same one yeah, sorry, i wear yeah. a mask every day i 
um, I test, was it every day or weekly? I'm double jabbed. I just had my booster and I've just come down with COVID. And I'm literally like, it's not even through the media. I'm like, I can't even comprehend that level. And I don't like to weigh the, the, use the word stupidity, but can you imagine? This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. The reasoning, like you said, the cult-type thinking behind that to me is absolutely crazy. How could you not, as a person, be questioning the, the, the either the vaccines or the tests or the masks? But no, I'm, it's like I'm not going to question any of those things. Those are all okay. It must be the unvax that's given it to me. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious, isn't it? Like, um, you know, that the this is the first product in history whose failure has been blamed on the people who don't take it. I mean, I've seen that going around and it's like, wow, how accurate. If you did this with anything else, you would be just com- considered to be a complete loon. Uh, but here we it's are. It's like going to a party and you've got one person that's sober and the other nine pers- people have been drinking or drug taking or anything. And, um, you know, it's like then like like, like saying... If then all of those people have accidents or, you know, fall over. Well, it wasn't our fault. It wasn't the drink or drugs that did it. It was that one person who was sober in the corner. They were the problem and they made us do it. It's, it that, it's the equivalent. Oh, it's not the drink or the drugs. It was, that, it was the one sober person, you know? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but, you know. This is the world we're living in. We're living in a world where it it just seems like people have tied themselves to a narrative, whether that's people in politics, whether that's people in media or, you know, just individuals. They've tied themselves to a narrative which has completely crumbled. And it just seems that the hardest thing in the world for people to do is to admit that they've been duped, to admit that they've been wrong. You know, they, they just can't do it. So now they have to just go to ever more crazy lengths to try to um, you know, have this narrative somehow work for them or to just have a worldview that doesn't contradict themselves yeah. in, in any, or it does contradict themselves, but they don't want it to, to contradict their opinion on it. They don't want to actually have to go, yeah. hey, you know what? I was wrong. I, you know, like I should have listened to other people. I've been duped. It's more like, no, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, make out that I've done the right thing. And I think this is the problem with the vaccines is I think that there's a yeah. lot of l- like low, like kind of closet vaccine regret. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. But rather than them coming to that admission, they go, no, I'm going to I'm going to just kind of like create all of these uh, kind of mental gymnastics to actually at the other end, um, everything makes sense. I've made the right choice. And it's like, just step back and admit you were wrong. Just admit it. Like admit you were admit you were duped. Like the the resistance is right there, willing to take you in, take you under our wing and then let's fight this thing together. But you have to admit that. Well, it's almost like for me growing up. Um, I've always said that like going to school should never just be about like academics. There should have been like more life lessons, if if you like. And one of those things growing up, I always said, is exactly what you pointed out, the ability for people to say I was wrong. I've noticed it when I was a kid. I noticed it as an adult. It seems to be it's like those type of things that almost as a social skill need to be taught. Like that's a really good trait. That's a compassionate, good thing to do. And it's like these things kind of go that we don't talk about them, you know, and then and then because we don't, it leads to this it, this type of thing. I mean, it was very big for me because I grew up in an abusive household with um, with my mum was a narcissist. And, and obviously anyone that knows anything about narcissists, there's the one thing they cannot do. Like in my whole childhood, I was told that absolutely everything was my fault. You know, my mum um, and, and my dad is an enabler. Never in their whole life to this day have they ever done anything wrong. Everything was my fault. They have never taken any responsibility for anything. They have never apologized. They've never, you know, and for me, obviously, I learned that very, very, you know, young, you know, I was in therapy. So I always learned that the ability to say sorry and to take responsibility for your actions and to be able to say, do you know what? I was wrong. That's massive. You know, it's actually as a society, if you could get, if we could grow up and all be taught that, you know, it, it, it would be a better place to live. And we can see that with COVID and we can see, like you said, with vaccine regret. Can you imagine if so many people found it easier to be able to say, oh, I was wrong? You know, uh, you know, but we're not because the other problem with social media is, you know, 
this conditioning with with phones and smartphones, social media is it's like we've taught we've lots of people say it's kind of growing like a whole developing a world of narcissists. It's it's we're going the other way. Sometimes it, it's. <laughs> The, the same thing that I'm saying, it's like nobody's allowed to be wrong and it all has to be about us. And like that's kind of sometimes I think being part of the problem, the likes, the followers, the, the, the Instagram, the, it's stopping people being able to say I was wrong. It's easier to 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 go with the with the let's just make excuses, but I'm not going to say I'm wrong. Let's double down on my lie. I, I, hope, I don't know if that all make any, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, the other thing is I think that we seem to have a culture that is weak in many ways. And, um, you know, actually, th this, I think, has been part of the problem. I'm not sure that this thing could have happened, you know, in like, for instance, maybe, I don't know, 50, 70, 80 years. I, I really just don't think this would have been able to happen, um, you know, because also the other thing is just that people are so afraid to just make a stand on something and to just say, this is my view, this is what I think, and I'm sticking to it. It's all just like, oh, I'm going to make everyone else kind of feel better, feel okay, and I'm not going to kind of like stick my head above the parapet too much. And it's just like, we actually need people to just stand up and just say, like, this is wrong. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do what the government tells me. I'm not going to do what, this, you know, I don't care what everyone else thinks but this is my uh, set of principles well, and i'm going to stick to it i've made a couple of observations and a couple of tweets that have gone viral but one of them was that i said that covid was a middle class phenomenon and that um i'd observed that when i go to my friends often um um you know i come from a council estate you know the compliance within the um the less privileged communities is completely different. Most of them are unvaxxed. Essentially, they said to me, I've got more important things to worry about. I've got my bills to pay. That They're not interested in virtual signaling. Um, and and because it's just like, they're just like COVID, you know, but, and you notice then, like I said, you go to Waitrose and suddenly every single person's wearing a mask. And, you know, in particularly, even in my experience, it's all my middle class and upper class friends that, that, that have fallen out with me, you know, that mm. essentially the, the more you've got to lose, that if you've got the nice big house and, and, and the car and blah, 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 you are more likely to go away to, to go to comply. I've observed because essentially you don't want the government to take away those things. Whereas if you if you've not got much to lose in the first place, I mean, I'm not saying that across the board, but it's, it's certainly been my observation in, it, it, you know, it, and and as well, the people that are awake, the more privileged that you tend that that I've seen that people tend to be. You know, I've not had an easy life at all. You know, it's very easy for me to have already seen that things don't work out and that there are not very nice people in the world. You know, it was very easy for me to see. But my very privileged friends who have gone through life with 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 not just financially but very secure families and and everything. They're just like, they're the ones that more likely say to me, I don't really understand. So of course the government are going to look out for our <laughs> You know, and that's what, you know, it's, uh, obviously that's, you know, it, it's I'm kind of stereotyping to a degree, but essentially what I'm saying is the more privilege you have and the more likely, you are more likely to comply. And it's those who have taken a stand before or have had a difficult life in some way are more likely because they've already had to do it. They've already had a hard time of it in some way. You know, they understand life isn't a sugar-coated fairy tale. Yeah, and I also think that these people um, who are a bit more kind of like privileged, they, they seem to just like fall for the bullshit in society a lot more you know like they believe yeah. in all of these institutions they're like oh yeah the nhs yeah. is perfect and you know yeah. sage oh i'm sure they've got everything right and it's just like get a grip like these institutions are corrupt as hell uh, you know yeah. just look across the board the who but they all kind of like love these these quango-esque organizations and it, it, it's quite confusing actually because if they if they believe in it then they can keep their lifestyle those those institutions keep their way of life. Like I said, if you're less privileged, you understand you've got a distrust of authorities. When I go down the council estate, they know that the, the distrust of authorities is massive because the, it's the yeah. other way around. You know, so what you're saying, that that understanding that, oh, I love all these institutions because they believe those institutions keep their way of life in place. And, and it's a, almost like a cult and religion in itself. You know, whereas... Uh, my understanding growing up, I've had nothing but problems from authorities 
you know, growing up, particularly my, my understanding because of my mental health problems I've had in the past, um, you know, the NHS have been absolutely horrendous um, in dealing particularly with mental health. So, you know, I've not got many good tales to tell. All my mental health services got taken away, um, in the first week of lockdown and they've never returned. And I only had, you know, my psychiatrist who I had, I mean, I discharged myself in the end because he was the one in the end that said, you'll never be able to have a face-to-face appointment basically within the NHS, unless you're prepared to go in full PPE and I'll have to go in full PPE. And I was like, well, let's just discharge me then because I'm never prepared to do that because you're putting, you know, with, with all the trauma I've experienced in my life, I could, you know I can't wear any PPE. It's not even possible. But he basically said, well, that the, the, the COVID, he basically said to me, COVID will always be important, more important nowadays than mental health. So, you know. Was he saying that in seriousness or, or, or like, was he saying it sarcastically? No, no. He literally said, it's not that I agree with it, but he said within the NHS, I can see no future with going back to how we used to do mental health. So he said, unless you're mm. willing to start doing appointments on Zoom calls or accept that you will need to do tests and wear PPE, you won't be getting any mental health services. And I was like, well, then I discharged myself. You should reach out to the community and, and see, because I'm sure that there are psychiatrists and stuff within the community who would be willing to do that. And and like, this is not just a message specifically for you, but I think like generally people need to look within our community for, for everything, for, for all of our kind of future relationships, business or otherwise. Well, luckily I was already, I already paid for my own private therapist and I have done for, you know, um, for the last five years. And uh, luckily she's completely awake to what's going on, probably because of me as well, because I'm in there week on week. Like, yeah. red, red pill your therapist, that's, uh, that's activism. Oh, 100%. Um, so I'm lucky, you know, that I see, I see her. So, you know, although I was having NHS care, thankfully I was still had other care that I paid for myself. Um, but I was certainly shocked. And, and um, he he was very much in denial because, you know, uh, throughout the time that I was seeing seeing him that first year, I was obviously trying to tell, tell him, you know, this is what's coming. Um, and he kept saying to me, no, 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 Natalie. He said, it will be okay. After the double jab, he said, everything will go back to normal. He was so, so confident. He said, I know you have your feelings and I can understand why. And then it kept going. As it kept going, um, he was like, um, well, I know you have been right so far, but we have to be positive still. And and eventually when I, when I did question him that last time, when I discharged myself, he had to... He had to really um, kind of stand down and say, OK, you are right. I have spoken. There is no future that I can see in the except in the near future, in the next one or two years uh, where we won't be wearing masks and testing. And I was like, then I then I'm out. I said because I kind of had a go at him and I said, but, you know, this is wrong. So why aren't you standing up yourself? I said to him and he was like, it was basically the same thing again, because I can't. Because I need my job. It's strange how some people have found a calling through this thing, though, right? Like some people that e- even even when they seem to get it, they're like, "Oh yeah, but you know, I, I've just got to get keep my head down, and do this." It's like you realize that everything else will be completely irrelevant if this all goes through. Like this job of yours will mean nothing when everything's a social yeah. credit system. Like, um, yeah. you know, like everything is dependent on what we do over the next few years. Yep, and that's that's what he said. He said, "But I know vaccine passports are on Natalie, and I do, and I know." You know, he just kept going, but I don't believe they'll go through. I see why you're upset about them, but I don't believe. And that's what I get a lot. You know, Mm -hmm. this belief that they won't happen. I mean, I've obviously discharged myself, so I won't I won't speak to him again. But that's what it was like. It was more like, just hang on, Natalie. Things will sort themselves out over the next couple of years and then you will be able to come back. And I'm like the misunderstanding from people. This 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 view that things are only temporary and the old normal will come back. Just if you hold on long enough, well, you know. Let's um, let's try to end on something more positive, and I'm not yes. trying to appease to the to, to the hopium no, people, no, no, no. right? But what I what, what I would like to hear from you is what we can all be doing. Obviously, you mentioned non-compliance, but can yeah. you give us some specifics on what we on what we should all be doing to to to, to finish this thing off and try try to end it all? Well, yeah, I had a, like I think I said to you just but just before we come on, I had a really positive experience with the school this this week with my with my children so i got a letter from the school saying 
that there'd been a positive case in, in my youngest class. So um, he had to either take a test, like a PC, negative, um, either he had to do an LFT test every day or a negative PCR or self-isolate. And I simply, you know, sent an email back. I was the only person in the class that just said, you know, d- um, you know, testing, uh, LFT testing and PCR testing are not mandatory and are not a legal requirement. You know, I don't, con- um, I don't, um, uh, comply with any testing and I do not consent. So he will be coming in tomorrow. It was a perfectly polite email. And, um, you know, my ex-husband said to me that won't work. And everybody, all my friends said that won't work. And literally I just got an email straight back saying, that's absolutely fine. He can come in tomorrow. And I think what we're not realizing, it's sometimes that simple, you know, people, people feel that they're forced into having a test or they're forced into wearing a mask. Sometimes you can, the more we can let people know that that those simple things, you can, like you've been able to find all those people told you you wouldn't be able to get on a plane and you were able to do it. Just having the confidence to stand up and say, it's not mandatory and it's not a legal requirement. And if we can be telling people to do that, the more people that are now aware that, that like you said, they're aware that something's not right in the booster. Why don't we start telling them it's not mandatory? It's not a legal requirement. The more we can, t- and it doesn't have to be some big argument just to, just to keep letting people know on a daily basis. And that was a massive win for me, a massive win. So he's gone into school, absolutely no problem. And I'm not one of the only people that I know in the community that that's happened because every other person just accepted the email. That's awesome. That's really great to hear. And yeah, I, I think that like non-compliance in any way that you can do it is is great. But I, I would also just add that I think that taking precautions before they happen, because like early on, earlier on, we were mentioning about how they, you know, they'll try and stop you renting, they'll try and stop this and that. Yeah. And like, I think that, you know, for instance, taking taking your 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 money, making it more unconfiscatable, yes. put it into something like Bitcoin. Like I, I'm, I've i been telling people like when they're like, oh, why, why are you uh, why are you so on the Bitcoin thing? And well, how does that have anything to do with this? It's like they can't take it. They literally can't take it, right? Like, yep. um, and with other things, you know, even when it comes to, to work and your job, like try to do something when you're working, where you're working for your for yourself, if you can. Try not to be, you know, um, subject to the whims of a boss who might turn around tomorrow yes. and say you've got to take a vaccine. Like, just try to make yourself more sovereign, which is kind of a big theme of, of this podcast. But also that in conjunction with absolute non-compliance with these diktats. And, and, you know, like you said, I'm trying to move at the moment. So I'm trying to move to a rental where I'm with a friend who's not going to, at the moment, I'm with an estate agent who could easily say something. Like you said, those little things, if you can put things in place to prevent it. So I know that then if I, if I can move to somewhere where suddenly I'm not going to have that authority saying, well, you can't do that. Those little things, uh, like you said, preventive measures as well are going to make things a whole lot easier moving forward. Um, if, if, if you're in a position where you're not going to feel like you're coerced or have to do something yeah yeah and i and i love that message earlier as well about just like red pilling everyone you know not turning away from these conversations we're past that point right we, we're two we years in you know we've been we've been proven we've been proven correct time and time again we know where this is going we need to red pill everyone and red pill them fast because you know we're in a yeah. race against time here yeah so, absolutely Anyway, this has been a really great chat. Thanks so much for everything that you do because, you know, I really love your energy and, you know, your videos are always great and, you know, they've always just got the perfect tone and, you know, you've, you've, you've kind of really made, you, made a name for yourself in the community and I think it's absolutely deserved. Um, so, yeah, thanks for what you do and thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, really enjoyed it. Thanks, Johnny.